Well, thank you very much, everybody. We have a very special friend of mine, the Emir of Kuwait. And we've uh, had a long relationship, and especially over the last year and a half. Things have worked out very well between our countries. We practice uh, large-scale trade together, investment together, and also, I think very importantly, terrorism and the fight against terrorism. And uh, Kuwait has been a great partner. And uh, we especially respect the Emir. He is something uh, that uh, really very special. He's very special in the region, highly respected by everybody. And we appreciate your friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you. وتربطنا بالكويت علاقة طويلة في الأمد ولا سيما أيضا خلال السنة والنصف الماضية هنالك علاقات تجارية واستثمارية طويلة في الأمد وواسعة نطاق مع الكويت وطبعا علاقتنا وطيدة بالنسبة لمكافحة الإرهاب الكويت شريك عظيم نحترم صاحب السمو الأمير وهو مميز وله مكان مميز في المنطقة ويحترمه الجميع في المنطقة وحول العالم نرحب بكم Thank you, Mr. President. And how much really I am very happy that to meet with you for the third time in almost one year. This does prove that the bilateral relation between Kuwait and the United States of America and between us as persons it is a, a, a very good relation, and it will remain to be a good relation. There is a, a mutual trust between both of us. Therefore, Thank you, Mr. President, for your warm welcome. This visit comes as a continuation of the profound and strategic relations between our two countries and the significant progress they are witnessing, which we are always interested in consolidating it and promoting it. In this connection, I commend the unwavering commitment of the United States to the security and stability of our region, as it had demonstrated in its leadership of the international coalition that liberated my country. <laughs> تفضيل علاقاتنا الثنائية سنركز على تعزيز التعاون في مجالات التجارة والاستثمار الجزائي قبل التعاون في المجال العسكري والطاقة والتعليم ويسرني أن أدعو الشركات الأمريكية للمشاركة في مشاريع التنمية والبنية التحتية في دولة الكويت وإلى الاستثمار فيها in this context of pursuing and consolidating our bilateral relations, we shall concentrate our efforts to the fields of trade and increased investment along with our cooperation in the military, energy, and educational fields. I am pleased to invite United States corporations to participate in development and infrastructure projects in the state of Kuwait and to invest therein according to the Kuwaiti laws and regulations attractive to investments. <laughs> يتصادف اجتماعنا مع قاضي الرئيس مع استئناف المضاحفات في جنيف بين طرفي النزاع في اليمن والتي يقودها المبعوث الخاص الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة لليمن والتي دعونا لها واعتذنت واعتذنت الكويت 
المستهدفين وضع حد لهذا القتال المدمر وإثارة المسائل والإثارة المسائل لأمننا واستغراضنا في المنطقة إننا نتطلع والعالم بأسهم أن تحقق مباحثات السلام هذه نتائجها المرجوة I'm pleased to, uh, we will also discuss means of cooperation to resolve the crisis in the Gulf region and look forward with hope that an end to this crisis will be reached. Our meeting with His Excellency the President coincides with the resumption of the discussions between the two parties in the conflict in Yemen, led by the special representative of the Secretary General of the United Nations for Yemen, which we have both called for and has been embraced by Kuwait with a view to put an end to this destructive conflict and its destabilizing effects on the security and stability of the countries in our region. We, alongside the entire world, are looking forward to see the discussions yield their desired results. <laughs> ضمن التحالف الدولي لمكافحة الإرهاب والقضايا ذات الاهتمام المشترك وفي مقدمتها القضية الفلسطينية وتطوراتها وآخر المستجدات السياسية على الساحتين الدولية والإقليمية ولا بد لي أن أشيد بالدور الإيجابي والجهود الكبيرة والمقدرة التي تقوم بها الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية لتحقيق الأمن والاستقرار في المنطقة والعالم. شكرا فقط. We will also review our achievements under our solid partnership with the international coalition to combat terrorism as well as issues of mutual interest. For most among them is the Palestinian issue and its developments and the latest political developments in the international and regional arena. In this, in this respect, I find it incumbent upon myself to, be, to pay a tribute to the positive role and the great and appreciated efforts that the United States exert to achieve peace and stability in our region and in the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, thank you very much. And I have to say that Kuwait has made tremendous investments in the United States, and uh, they're buying a lot of equipment and a lot of military equipment in particular which we encourage. That's jobs for the United States. Nobody makes jets, fighters, and uh, all of the different uh, components better than the United States. We're way advanced over anybody. And that advancement has really been enhanced over the last short period of time. Uh, we've given them great incentive. But we appreciate the big purchases that you've been making. And frankly, we're working very hard to bring some stability into the Middle East. Uh, Yemen is a tragic situation when you look. There's so many tragic areas in the Middle East. It's a very hard — it's a very hard thing. It's a very complex uh, jigsaw puzzle. But we're making big strides. Uh, Iran is a very much different place from when I first took office. Iran is in turmoil right now. They're in total turmoil. When I took office, it was just a question of how long until they took over the entire Middle East. Now they are just worrying about their own survival as a country. We'll see what happens with Iran, whether they want to talk or not. That's up to them, not up to me. I will uh, always be available, but it doesn't matter one way or the other. We'll see what happens. But Iran is a much different place than when I took over the presidency. I can say that for a lot of countries around the world. The United States is stronger now than ever before. We have the highest stock market that we've ever had. Uh, if you invested in the stock market, on average, we're up over 45 percent on the various markets. Uh, you have to be quite happy about that. But I view it differently. I view it as jobs. I view it as a strong economy. I view it as record-setting unemployment. We have unemployment that are at the lowest levels that we've ever had, and in particular with certain groups, African-American, Asian, Hispanic. They're the lowest levels in the history of our country. So. We've been doing very well, and we appreciate the big investments and the confidence that you have in the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wish you good luck. I wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I am. I'm happy. Uh,
with the Kavanaugh hearings. I watched today for a little while. I saw some incredible answers to very complex questions. He's an outstanding intellect. He's an outstanding judge. He was born for the position. I heard as long as 10 years ago, people were saying he should be a Supreme Court judge. I didn't know him at the time, but I was hearing from a lot of people, friends of mine from Washington and other places, saying that Brett Kavanaugh should be a Supreme Court judge someday. And I'm honored that I gave him the chance. I've watched his, his uh, remarks. I've watched his performance. I've watched his statements. And uh, honestly, they've been totally brilliant. I think that uh, the other side is grasping at straws. And really, the other side should embrace him, because you're never going to find better in terms of talent or intellect than what you have in Brett Kavanaugh. Oh yeah, sure, he's lying. Sure. No, Bob would. No, the book. You mean on the book? Uh, the book means nothing. It's a work of fiction. Already, General Mattis has come out very, very strongly, and I think you know General Mattis. He does what he wants to do. He's a very independent guy. He was insulted by the remarks that were attributed to him, and he came out with a very strong statement. I assume you read it. I hope you read it last night. General John Kelly, the same exact thing. He thought he was insulted by what they said. He's right here. Uh, he's insulted by — he couldn't believe what they said. And he put out a very, very strong statement. And many others. And other statements are coming out. The book is a work of fiction. If you look back at Woodward's past, he had the same problem with other presidents. He likes to get publicity, sell some books. But we have done more as a, an administration than any other administration in already less than two years. It's incredible. We will soon be approaching two years. But there's no administration, probably, and even you folks have generally acknowledged this, that has done more work. When you look at tax cuts, regulation cuts, Supreme Court justices, the court system generally, and so much more, even if you look at the health care programs that we're passing, and all of the things we've done, we're saving Social Security. The Democrats will destroy Social Security. We're saving Medicare. The Democrats want to destroy Medicare. You look at what they're doing, they're going to destroy Medicare. And we will save it. We will keep it going. We're making it stronger. We're making Social Security stronger. We're making our whole country stronger. So uh, all you have to do is look at the achievements. But I was very honored when, without my even knowing about it, uh, statements were put out by General Kelly, by General Mattis, highly respected people by everybody, including yourselves. Uh, and the book is a work of fiction. Uh, it's a — it really, if you look at it, it was put out to interfere, in my opinion, at this time, with the Kavanaugh hearings, which I don't think it's done, because so many people have come out against it. So many people who have been written about said that — I never said that. Rudy Giuliani is another one. He's very insulted by the book and what was stated in the book. So uh, we run — we do run a strong White House, there's no question about it. And we are doing things that nobody else has ever been able to do. And our country is stronger now than it's ever been. And in a very short period of time, $700 billion being spent on the military the next year, 716, $716 billion. We will uh, actually be far stronger than we've ever been, and that's what we needed to be. Thank you all very much. Oh, we have a great relationship. Uh, first of all, I have a great personal relationship with the Emir, and uh, Kuwait is a place that uh, I've known for a long time. I have many friends that live in, in Kuwait, and they live, frankly, in Washington and New York, mostly, that I know, and I've known them for a long time. Very, very uh, fine people. Our relationship and our bilateral relationship is uh, very, very powerful, very strong. And they view us as uh, a place where They've done very well, and they like to invest their money in the United States, so we like that. So Canada's meeting with us right now as we speak. We have to make a fair deal with Canada. As you know, they charge tariffs of 300 percent on dairy products, which a lot of people never understood. Uh, they have walls up against us uh, doing business in Canada, and yet they come and do business with us, and we can't let that happen. Uh, look. We have a very strong position, and we are the one that people want to come in and take advantage of. They've been taken advantage of, along with it. I'm not blaming Canada. I love Canada. I love the people of Canada. But uh, they and other countries have been 
taking advantage of the United States for many years, and this is a president that has stopped it. Uh, we've made a deal with Mexico, and Mexico's been terrific to deal with, including their new president, who I spoke with, and I think we're going to have a very good relationship with Mexico going forward. And the deal is a much more fair deal between the United States and Mexico, because NAFTA goes down as one of the worst trade deals in the history of our country. It emptied out millions of jobs. It emptied out factories and plants all over the United States. And it was a very unfair deal and a very foolish deal. And in fact, you could say a very stupid deal for the United States to make. We are straightening out these horrible trade deals. As you know, we had 4.1 GDP. It was just raised to 4.2. Nobody thought that was possible. When the trade deals are fixed and made fair, uh, GDP will go even higher and potentially much higher than that. And if you go back to election and go back to campaigning, nobody ever would have said that was possible except me and maybe a few others that believe in me. Thank you all very much. Anything's possible. Anything is possible. Say it, what? What? North Korea? Did you say Syria? Yes. Uh, I think it's a very sad situation in Idlib and the province, what's going on there. It's being surrounded, and they feel they have 35,000 of their enemy there, and yet you have 3 million people living there. And I just tell you that they will hopefully be very, very judicious and careful, because the world is watching. That cannot be a slaughter. If it's a slaughter, the world is going to get very, very angry. And the United States is going to get very angry, too. Okay? I am watching that very closely. So it's surrounded right now and the province. And it's surrounded by a lot of people with a lot of weapons. And these are innocent people. You have three million, at least, innocent people there. And you have to be very, very careful. And the world is watching, and the United States is watching very closely. Thank you very much, everybody. Not at all. Well, the book is fiction. I heard somewhere where they said the assassination of President Assad by the United States uh, never even discussed. The book is total fiction. Just like he wrote in the past about other presidents, you look at what he said about President Bush, what he said about President Obama, big scandalous thing, big. It lasts for about uh, a day. No, that was never even contemplated, nor would it be contemplated. And it should not have been written about in the book. Uh, it's just more fiction. The book is total fiction. Will you okay? sue, sir? All right, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you very much.